Hello guys, True Nightmare here, and today I'm doing a small tutorial on how to run your own custom mod pack of a server. Now, um, I'm doing this because there's not really many tutorials, and some custom mod packs don't actually come with the uh, server files. So today we're going to do Fullcraft, which is the hardest one I've done so far, personally, as it took like a long time to sort this out. But um, this will work for any custom mod pack if you use the Twitch app, most of them also in the Technic launcher, however I don't know the file locations which we're going to be going through here. But uh, yeah, I thought I'd make this video because people have been asking. Uh, so first things first, make sure you've installed your mod pack, of course, and you have a version of it running. Uh, I've muted the, the version of the mod pack because it's uh, quite loud and Minecraft music's nice, but I don't need it for this tutorial. Okay, uh, and after that, you're going to want to go into your mod pack, find out what version of Forge it's using. Uh, once you've got that, you're going to want to download Forge, so I'm going to quickly go do that because I haven't got the 2.511 version for 1.10.2. Uh, so when it comes to Forge, all you really need to remember is the 2.511 and the version number of Minecraft. Make sure you click on the right version of Minecraft and then find the right version of the file, which for me is here, and get the installer. Once you're done here, you can skip the ad, that's perfectly fine. And now you've got Forge download, make sure to keep this because you need this file, and then run it. Alright, now you've got the Forge setup uh, open. I would recommend quickly before you doing that, however, to actually make a folder for your server. I have not done this yet. But I personally like to make them inside the uh, mod pack folders, so I know exactly what the hell I'm going for. So if I quickly make a new server folder, server, there's just for, let's do, uh, I'm going to call it testing. You can really name whatever you like, but as long as it's not any of the names of the uh, already set folders, it, it's fine. Uh, if you want to have like a uh, me and my friends public server or me and the family, don't know why you're on the family, but if you want that, you do that. So then you go back to your installer. You click the server file, and then you get this location. The quickest and easiest way to do that is to go to your area where you've got it saved, press this file button, copy that link, and then post it here. That will automatically add this to the area. I just press enter to do that, you can press OK, it's fine. And you can choose whether or not you want this on or off. If you've got it on, it will send information back to Forge whenever it crashes, so they can know if there's any issues with Forge. I personally don't like to have it on because I don't know if it does any background stuff, which I'm not aware of. It will download the necessary files and then we can get on with this. Okay, once you have done this, make sure to run Forge. This will crash after adding a bunch of new files. There we go. So because it crashed because we haven't signed the eulogy, uh, we do this by changing this to true. That basically confirms that you're okay with um, Minecraft terms and conditions on running a server. And uh, yeah, so before we run this again, because this will work now, but it will run in a vanilla Minecraft, and we don't want vanilla. Um, we just need to open for, um, open up the Fullcraft folder, and take out three fol uh, folders. We need the mods folder, we need the uh, config, and we need scripts. Now if your mod pack doesn't have the scripts folder, that doesn't matter. Some do, this is one of them that does, so you're going to need it. Uh, go back into here, um, and to multi-select files by the way, it's control and then click, uh, and then just paste them in here. We need to copy and paste, and just wait for this to run through. Doesn't usually take too long. Uh, and let me decide what these are. These are configs, and the one in the server file are newer, so we'll take them. Okay, and once that's done, you want to run Forge again. This again will crash. To my surprise, this server did not actually crash, so I think that's fine. However, I am going to show you a crash report I got from another server, just to show you what to do if your one does crash. I might just be lucky and this might be a one-time deal. Alright, go right back. So here I'm in the Simple Life 2, which is another mod pack I made a server for. If I go into my crash reports, which you can find in the crash reports folder, and click on the crash report text, you'll receive a bunch of information about the crash report. Uh, now, first off, I do not recommend viewing a crash report in Notepad. I recommend the program Notepad++, which is what I like to use personally, because it also not only sorts out all the information in defined categories, it has a few functionality options that other pads do not use. Uh, for instance, here we've got a bunch of um, coded letters. If I double-click on them, you'll see that all of them are highlighted, that are exactly the same. This is the same for if you choose... Uh, any set of numbers, for example, if I choose here, uh, okay, nothing's like that. But if I go 1.10, which there should be some tens, then there'll be tens. The tens everywhere. Um, but yeah, it makes it easier to realize what's wrong. Uh, so when uh, when the server crashes, you're going to want to double-click on one of these so you can see all the ones that worked. 
And then you want to find the one that isn't highlighted, which here is custom backgrounds. This usually tends to be a problem for servers. Uh, and yeah, so what you do when you find the issue is you make sure there's no other issues. Found the issue, so it's just custom servers, um, just custom backgrounds. So in the case of this one, which I have already done, you'll go into your server, you'll go into your mods, and you'll delete custom backgrounds. It is done in this pack, as I am using the server for my support server, so I cannot show you that being done. But back to Fallcraft. So now that your server is up and running, you're going to make sure you want to be able to connect to it. I've already tested this quickly to make sure it works, but uh, yeah. So you can either do direct connection or you can add your own server if, you, if you've got multiple servers and you don't do that. But as this is currently local, you can use a local host. This only works if the server is on the local machine that you're trying to connect to. But once you've done that, you can just jump straight on. And as you can see, we're in the world of Fallcraft. But just to show you this to prove that I'm not lying, uh, you can actually see my names here. Alright, the next thing I'm going to show you is the reason you got a server up is you don't want to play single, do you? You want to play together. So, how do you get your friends to join your server? Now, I haven't got any friends to actually join me right now, so it's mo mainly me showing you. Um, but first off, you need to get your IP. You can do this by typing uh, what's my IP into Google. And if you do this, you'll get your IP. Now, this will be blurred out for you guys, so I'm not going to show you my IP. I recommend only giving this out to people that you trust. If you give out your IP, people can find out where you are and they can actually access your systems with, with enough brute force. So be careful who you give this to. Recommend only friends. Um, but not it's not just the IP, however, that is required. You also need a port forward. I will not be able to show you how to port forward as each uh, internet provider is different. I, for example, am with Virgin Media. Uh, Virgin Media does it a quite simple way. It's just a drop down and then you type in what port you want on what PC. But uh, other systems, it's completely different, so you're going to have to Google a port forwarding method for your specific brand. Uh, and if you do not have admin permission to your uh, router, you're going to have to ask the person that does, probably an adult. And once you've got those bits of information, once you have got your IP and, the, and, and a port forwarded, you can then just send the IP to your friend. They just put the IP here, I'm just going to quickly copy and paste it. Even if you haven't port forwarded, you can connect to your own IP. Do not be fooled if the, you try this and you can connect. You still need to port forward or you won't be able to do that. You can use other ser um, services like Hemisher and uh, Tungle, but I highly rec recommend port forwarding as it's much easier to do. And it's just, it, it's, it, it, it saves like so much room and memory. So connect to the IP and they will be getting this, uh, whatever you set the moto to, and they can just join like that. But that's going to be it for today, guys. I hope that covered all the basics of setting up a server. I haven't gone into any of the details about whitelisting or anything like that because it's not essential at this stage just to get a server running. But once you've uh, got this, once you're in, servers playing, you can play with your friends. Uh, all the basic Minecraft rules apply until you change stuff. But yes, uh, thank you for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Hope this helped. If it did, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe uh, if you want to see awesome content from me at least. What the hell is that thing? The, uh, the hell are you? Big Scowder. Huh. Okay. <laughs> Hope this tutorial helped. Thanks for watching. Bye.